Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for bringing us here. And the purpose for the study, you instill in every heart and produce in every life so that the study of the word will be beneficial, profitable for everyone, in everyone, through everyone, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I could barely hear you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to our Bible study once again. A Bible study is not that we just come as usual. It has a purpose. The Word of God is given for a purpose. The Word of God is read and learned and heard for a purpose. The Word of God is understood, meditated upon, prayed about. The Word of God is laid out for a purpose, for salvation, for sanctification, for our strength, for our steadfastness, and for our going forth steadily in the Lord, being planted and rooted on the rock of ages, that whatever may be happening around us or in our nation, we will stand firm because the word points us to how to be steady, solid, steadfast in the Lord. Today, we're coming to James chapter 1. Reading from verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Tonight, the topic is the blessed Bible believing doers of the word. The blessed Bible believing doers of of the word. It says, Be ye doers of the word, which word repent and believe in the gospel. Repent, we come to the Lord for the first time. And as we come, He confronts us with our lifestyle in the past. And He says that lifestyle in the past will not get us to heaven. And here we are, we want to get to heaven. What do I do? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Be ye doers of the word. Since you've been learning the word, have you done that? Have you repented? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you take me to the place where it happened? How it happened? And can you tell the exact thing that happened after you repented and believed on the Lord? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Did he say follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? It's a command. It's a demand he makes upon our lives. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall say the Lord blessed and the pure in heart for they shall see God. Have you done that? You've heard that many times. Have you done that? Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until the promise of the Father comes upon you for you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Have you done that? Have you tarried dead that wait upon the Lord? Shall renew their strength. We're weak spiritually because we've not been waiting upon the Lord. Tarry, wait until the Holy Ghost comes upon your life. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and not be drunk with wine. Have we done that? Have we been filled? Are we full of the Holy Ghost? Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church, a command, be not hearers of the word only, but be ye doers of the word. 
have we done that? A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. Does love control our lives? Does love channel our lives, direct our lives? And do we do that every time to everyone? Love your enemy too and pray for them that persecute you. The point is, he wants us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, not learners only, not preachers only, not leaders only, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The blessed, Bible believing doers of the word. We're dividing the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the forgetful self, deluded hearers of the word. The people look here after they have heard, they get up, they go home, and they leave as if they heard nothing, as if they learned nothing, as if they have not been exposed to the word, and the word has not been exposed to them. They are forgetful, they are self-deceived, they are self-deluded hearers of the word. Number two, the faithful self-denying hearers in his will. The faithful, the people who come faithfully, and the study of the word is not a waste. The study of the word does not go in one ear and come out the other ear. They are faithful to the Lord, the Lord of the word. They are faithful to the word, the word of the Lord. And that faithfulness makes them to pray and makes them to have the grace, the strength, the purpose, the passion that they want to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And they have to deny themselves. Because self will want us to go the other way. Self will want us to go the way of tradition and the way of habit and the way of the past life. But as we deny ourselves and we remain faithful unto the Lord in every little thing, in every big thing, those are the people that are blessed as they study the word and they apply the word to their own lives. Number three, the fruitful self forgetting harvesters in this way. And this way is, uh, you know, as you read the Acts of the Apostles, uh, Christianity is referred to as this way. The path of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, and the will of the Lord, and the work we have referred to as this way. And if we're going to be fruitful, we'll have to forget ourselves. That's the major problem of humanity. They think about themselves too much and too often. But the people who bear fruit in life, the people who are profitable in life are the people that forget themselves at the walk in this way of the Lord. And those people will be harvesting. They'll be helpful to the other people. They'll give hope to other people because they live a self-forgetting life. Number one now, the forgetful, self-deluded hearers of the word. We're looking at James chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Isn't that a terrible? It's, it's a serious thing when Satan deceives us and we're sucked in into a false system. It's a terrible thing when neighbors deceive us is the most dangerous and the most uh, damnable when we deceive ourselves. And it says, if we're not doers of the word and we're hearers only, we deceive our own selves. Verse 23, in verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word, any, anyone, like Judas Iscariot, he heard all that sermon on the mount. 
He heard everything Jesus said. He heard every promise, every precept, every proclamation of Christ. But he was just a hearer of the word. And not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror, in a glass. And then he tells us in verse 24, he says, And for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. He forgeteth is a sinner who needs salvation. He forgets is a backslider who needs restoration. He forgets is weak and he needs strength. He forgets is unholy, unrighteous, and he needs the touch, the transforming touch of the Lord to make him righteous and holy. He forgets he is a forgetful person, and he needs the grace of God to always bring the word in remembrance. The forgetful self, the loaded hearers of the word. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the forgetful self-deceived hearers of the word. Number two, the fruitless self-deluded um, handlers of his word. Number three is the filthy self, the filing haters of his word, of this word. Number one, number one is the forgetful self-deceived hearers of the word. Again, we have read James chapter 1, verse 22 to verse 24. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6, and we're looking at verse 3. In Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 3, but for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. He deceiveth himself. He is a sinner. He accounts himself to be a sage. He deceives himself. He's a backslider. And he thinks of himself to be a believer. He's a self deliver is a falling person and he thinks of himself of herself as a faithful person he deceives himself he is hardened and yet he feels that he is holy he deceives himself for if a man or if a woman or if a church man a church woman if a church goer or a church member think himself herself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself he deceiveth himself and deceiving oneself sometimes starts in a little way and then it expands and then it becomes a habit and if somebody keeps that habit of deceiving himself all through his life, he enters into eternity, being deceived, thinking he's going to heaven and he lands in hell. Because if a man think himself to be something, to be somebody, when he is nothing in the sight of God, he deceives himself. In Hebrews chapter 12, Reading from verse 5, Hebrews 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. Ye have forgotten. Can you think of yourself? All you've heard, all these many years, message of salvation, sanctification, holiness, purity of heart, message of love, message of the necessity of standing firm on the word of God, of earnestly contending for the faith in everything you do, everywhere you go, every plan you make, earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. All we have heard. Are you remembering? 
Am I remembering? Am I taking it to heart when I'm planning something? When I want to take a decision? When I want to go forth here or there? Have I forgotten, it says to the Hebrew Christians, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not the chastening, the correction of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Do we forget that the word of God was given? given by inspiration for correction, for reproof. And then when the word of God comes to us and we're corrected and we're reproved, how do we react? How do we respond? Our response will show whether we have forgotten that exhortation that we should not fail when God rebukes us or chastises us but you know it's not going to come from heaven and stand before us and rebuke us it's going to use his mouthpiece his watchmen his preachers the people he has sent for so that they reveal the mind of God unto us look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says for whom the Lord loveth he chastineth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, if he endure chastening, if he endure correction, if he endure rebuke, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father Chastineth not. Verse 8. In verse 8, but if he be without chastisement, if God becomes fed up with you, and there's no chastisement, there's no rebuke, there's no correction, if frame as loved idols, leave him alone. I preach in unto him the great things of my law, and he has counted that as a strange thing, leaving me alone. When God leaves a person alone like that, if he be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. It tells us in Second Peter. Chapter 1, in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, that is, if the virtues and the glorious grace of God abides in us and is abounding, abound it says, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, verse 9 says, But he that lacked these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He has forgotten that he came to the Lord so he could be purged, and he was purged. And so he could be prepared for heaven, and he was saved so he can be on his way to heaven. But now he does not continue learning. He does not continue doing what the Lord had been teaching him. He has now forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And then in verse 10, in verse 10, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do, if ye do, doers of the word, if ye do, not hear us only, if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. We're coming to number two there. Number two, if the fruitless, self deluded, handlers of his word. Not only the hearers, but the handlers, the people that 
know the word of God and even handle the word of God and they teach other people and they lead other people but they themselves are not doing what they teach they preach they don't perform they declare but they don't do the word of God those handlers of his word are self-deluded and they're fruitless. It tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Having a form of godliness, they talk, they preach, they declare, they know the doctrine, but it's only in form. They do not have the grace and the strength to do what they preach. Those handlers of the word, it says, don't even encourage them by listening to them. They say, and they do not. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, ever learning, ever preaching, ever proclaiming, ever emphasizing doctrine, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And those who are closest to them, like their wives, like their children, they will know. He knows the word. He knows it in the head. He doesn't have it in the heart. And the friends who are close to him, they know that he has a form of godliness, but he does not have the power to obey and the power to do what he proclaims in Luke chapter 13. Reading from verse 6, Luke 13, verse 6, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereof. You understand the fruit he's talking about? The fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the fidelity, the faith, the meekness, the goodness, and the temperance, the self control. That, that's, those are the fruits that the Lord is looking for as we read the word, as we study the word. But he came and sought fruit thereon. And found none. Then in verse 7, it says, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit. I come seeking fruit. I come seeking fruit. As the Lord reaches out to us, as the Lord speaks his word to us, and the Lord tells us, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. It was that fruit of salvation to come through us. As he reaches out to us and even prays for us, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. After that prayer, he wants us to agree with that prayer. Key in to that prayer. Pray that same prayer and receive the benefit of the sanctifying word. He'll come, he'll be seeking fruit in our lives. And he says, the three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. This fig tree, referring to you in particular, and find none. Cut it down. Why? Comparis each the ground. Then in verse 8, he tells us, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Give him a longer robe, but it's limited. This year also. The Lord will not, um, you know, take a uh, uh, patient infinitely, eternally, indefinitely, if we're not bearing fruit. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he also 
is a man. The Lord is not going to be waiting indefinitely. He gives us chance. Another chance comes today that we are hearing the word of God. And he wants us to be doers of that word. He says, till I shall dig about it and dunk it. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and if it bear fruit, Jonah has a second chance. If he now does what he has heard, go to Nineveh and pray to eat the preaching that I bid you. If he will not be a doer of the word, and that's what the Lord is asking of us. We failed in the past, fruitless in the past, unfaithful in the past. A chance comes now to be a doer of the word. If it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. It tells us in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, reading from verse 7. Hebrews 6, verse 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh out often upon it, and bringeth forth <coughs> herbs. Meat for the meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. A man sows the seed, God sends the rain, and then the seed brings forth fruit. That ground receives blessing, blessing from the Lord. But look at verse 8. In verse 8, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. That which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. When we shall bear nourishing fruit, nourishing figs, because labor had been expended on us, if we bear the right fruit. Profitable fruit, pleasant fruit. It says, well, the Lord will give more blessings. But instead of bearing the right fruit, instead of bearing redemptive fruit, fruit that shows that we're redeemed, that he has made us righteous, the fruit that shows that we have met Christ, we're in Christ, and we're new creatures in Christ. That's the fruit he expects, but if we bear the works of the flesh, if we bear the nature of Satan, if we bear the outcome of depravity, he says, he is rejected and is nice unto cursing, and whose end is to be burnt. Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 17, it says, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's character. That's lifestyle. That's behavior. That's habit. In verse 18, it says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. A saved soul cannot bring forth evil fruit. A standing spirit, standing in the Lord, abiding in the Lord, he cannot bear evil fruit. A truthful soul cannot bear lying, deceptive language. He says over here, a good tree the one made good by the Lord will not bring forth, cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19, in verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cut down, and cast into the fire. Understand? Those are the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ spoke about that tormenting fire, 
that eternal fire, that unquenchable fire, more than any other preacher, any other one in the whole of the Bible. Jesus said, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, verse 20 says, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them by their fruits. It's not by their testimony. Oh, I always, you know, come to the church. I always hear the preaching. I even write notes. No, no, not by what you say. By your fruit. By their fruits, you shall know them. Are you free from the works of the flesh? By their fruits, you shall know them. Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? And do you live as if you are a member of the body of Christ? And what Christ should have done, that's what you're doing. By their fruit, you shall know them. Verse 21. In verse 21, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, who says, Lord, Lord, the preacher say, Lord, Lord. The so-called believers say, Lord, Lord. Even the foolish virgins say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Religious people, traditional people, they say, Lord, Lord, denominational people. They say, Lord, Lord. And Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth he that doeth he that doeth we need grace he that doeth we need focus he that doeth we need determination he that doeth we need decision i'll be a doer of the word he that doeth only he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven verse 22 in verse 22 many will say unto me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name? That's where some people put all their emphasis. And it gives them popularity. It gives them the respect of people around them. And in thy name have cast out devils. That's why some, where some people concentrate. They focus their attention. They'll fast and pray. To cast out devils, they'll not fast and pray to cast out the anger in them, the evil in them, the bad habit in them, the defiling lifestyle in them. They think if they can cast out devils, they think that's enough. Jesus said, no, that's not enough. We must have Christ living in us and living us through us and they said and in thy name i've cast out many devils and we have done many wonderful works look at verse 23 in verse 23 and then will i profess unto them i never knew you what sad day what great proclamation on the final day when they cannot return and repent on the final day when they cannot make right what was wrong the lord says i'll tell them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity look at number three number three here we're looking at the filthy self defiling haters of this world the people who are defiled by themselves even when there's no other person around to defile them How is that possible satan was not tempted by another angel he was lucifer and he defiled himself he brought up the idea himself i will be like unto god and the pride defiled him feel the self defiling haters of this world 
in Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 10. Jude chapter 1, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. They don't know that thing, they are not sure of that thing, and yet they speak evil of that thing they know not. They do not understand the weighty matters of the word of God, yet they speak evil of those things they know not, they understand not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves they corrupt themselves uh, there are people they have the lifestyle the habits and the thinking and the thoughts of sin and even when there's nobody to defile them they defile themselves in verse 11 verse 11 says woe unto them for they have gone the way of Cain. Cain had never seen anybody killing another person. And yet, something came out of him that what nobody had ever done. Neither Adam nor Eve. And he was born, the firstborn. Never had he seen anybody killing another one and yet he brought the idea he invented the idea and he says woe unto them for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in again saying of Cory then in verse 12 verse 12 says these as sports in your fees of charity. That means they come to the meeting, they come to the assembly, the fellowship with the people of God in the church. As if they were part of the fellowship of the people of God when they feast with you and feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, backsliders. And then in verse 13, it says in verse 13, raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, when they talk, they are forgotten that what they are talking about is shameful. And with glee, with delight, with excitement, they tell of the foolish things they have done, of the sinful things they have done, they relate of the shameful lifestyle they have lived. They enjoy even talking about that. And yet, they go to church, they come to church, they read the Bible, they study the Bible, and they delight in those shameful, shameful things they've done in the past, which they're still doing. And it says, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. It's reserved for them the blackness of darkness even forever. In Second Timothy chapter 4, Reading from verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come. The time has now come. This was written about 2,000 years ago. The time will come at that time in the future. But now it's here. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They love motivation. They love excitement and they love all the things the preachers say that make them laugh in their sins make them rejoice in their evil but to hear the doctrine of repentance of salvation of the new covenant and the new creature in the new covenant to hear
a life that is properly lived in the grace of God. Uh -uh. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, unto stories, unto some things. You know, they met this, they met that. You know, that make people inquisitive, curious. They want to hear that. But the doctrine, the teaching, the solid exhortation that will take them, make them repent and take them to heaven, that they don't enjoy. In Hosea chapter 8, Reading from verse 11. Hosea chapter 8, verse 11. Because Ephraim has made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. Then in verse 12, it says, I got talking. I have written to him the great things of my law. I've written unto him the weightier things in my word. I've written unto him the essential things of heavenly minded uh, pilgrims. I've written unto him the great things of my love. But they were counted as a strange thing that a man would live free from sin, strange to them. That a man would have a circumcised heart to love God with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind. A strange thing that a man will resist temptation and overcome temptation and overcome the tempter to them. It's a strange thing that a man will be holy, that a man will be sanctified, that a man will live a life pleasing unto God, strange unto them, that our thoughts, our mind, our will, our decision, our desire, our devotion will be totally consecrated, surrendered unto the Lord. For them, that's the strange thing. Who can live in this world and not sin? and not continue in sin, who can live in this world and not give bribes and take bribes for them. It's a certain thing. I am reaching to him the great things of my Lord, but they are counted as a strange thing. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the faithful self denying hearers in his will. We're looking at James chapter 1 verse 22. It says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Verse 25. In verse 25, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. He, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Three things we're looking at. Number one, looking into the perfect law of liberty. Number two, living by the perfect love of the Lord. Number three, loaded with his perfect liberality for life. Look at number one. Number one, looking into the perfect law of liberty. It tells us in James chapter 1 verse 25. James chapter 1 verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty is the word of God, is the Bible, the old covenant, the new covenant that is referring to as the perfect law of liberty. The word of God is pure and is perfect. And the word of God like breaks us, frees us, 
and leads us into the liberty we have in Christ. That's why it says we look into the perfect law of liberty. And it says, therein, he continueth therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. And we look at Psalm 19, reading from verse 7, the perfect law of liberty. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. If we truly look into the perfect law of liberty, if we truly look into the watch of God, the perfect watch of God, it will show us our imperfection. It will show us our iniquity. It will show us our transgression. And it will also show us the watch that cleanses us. Wash me, and I shall be white as snow. Purge me, and I shall be whiter than snow. If the word that shows us our imperfection, that also shows us the perfect one, that also shows us how we can be so cleansed and so purged that it perfects us. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, making wise the simple turn. It tells us in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, The statutes of the Lord is right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. In verse 9, verse 9, the fear. The fear, of the, the fear of the Lord to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. In verse 10, in verse 10 more, to be desired at thee. The law of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, more to be desired at thee than gold, yea, than, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. It tells us in Second Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 16, all scripture, not some, all scripture, the one spoken directly by Christ, all scripture, the one that the apostles received, all of them, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and Peter and Paul and John and all the people that God used in the New Testament to give us the New Testament, all scripture. And everything we've had in the Old Testament, all from Genesis to Revelation, nobody to subtract, nobody to take away, and nobody to add anything. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The scriptures do not instruct us how to sin, how to fall, how to be corrupt, how to be defiled. If anyone is sinful, we didn't get that from scripture. That's coming out of the depraved mind of man or woman. But the scripture is given so that it will teach us doctrine. Make, give us reproof Give us correction And instruction in righteousness Verse 17 It says that the man of God The child of God May be perfect Thoroughly furnished Unto all good 
works. That's what the word does. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 34, reading from verse 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord. The book of the Lord. The Holy Bible. Seek ye out the book of the Lord. And read, No one of these shall fail, and none shall want her mate. For my mouth, the Lord is talking, it has commanded, and my spirit as it has gathered them. We're looking at number two there. Number two, we look into the perfect law of liberty. Number two now, we live by the perfect love of the Lord. The perfect love of the Lord. That's how we live. If we look at his law, it directs us to the purging and the cleansing and, and the redemption and the righteousness. And then we now live by the perfect love of the Lord. It tells us in Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's the principle by which we live. And we never take vacation from that. We never say today, I don't want to love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I want to do things today as if I'm on holidays. I take vacation from in the house, outside the house, on the train, on the road, in the bus, in the village, in the town in the place of work, anywhere we are, and in any condition we are, this does not depend on, I feel good today, I feel bad today, I feel sad today, I feel sorrowful today. No, all the time when we have Christ living on the inside of us, and we're living by the perfect love of the Lord, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Look at verse 40 there. In verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's including loving your neighbor as yourself. We're looking at Romans chapter 13. We're reading from verse 8. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. You owe everyone your neighbor. You owe everyone love. It's a debt you must pay. And you pay that every time. A neighbor, a stranger, a friend, a foe, husband, wife, children, parents, members of the church, anyone, everyone. This is what we owe. We owe it to one another, to love one another. And it says, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the Lord. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, because you love the man that's the husband of that woman. So you'll not commit adultery because you love her too. You don't want to do anything with her that you'll bring forth her imperfection and make her to sin and then miss heaven. Are you a woman? If you love a man, the man is so nice and good. Well, nice and good, you love him that you don't want him to get to hell. You will not offer your flesh, your body, because you know, I, I love him, that's not your husband. I love her, that's not your wife. You'll not offer your body in expressing your appreciation for them 
because if you do that you're actually sending them to hell and you're making them useless in the kingdom of god because you make them backsliders love does not offer your body to another person i love you no you hate them by sending them to hell it says thou shall not commit adultery thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not covet and if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying thou namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says love walketh no ill no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 14 galatians 5 14 for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In verse 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 19. In verse 19, now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery of the flesh, fornication of the flesh, uncleanness of the flesh, lasciviousness of the flesh. Verse 20, verse 20 says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies verse 21 in verse 21 envies and murders and drunkenness and revelings 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 and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they members of the church that they members outside the church that they so-called believers that they those who testify loud i am born again i am saved that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god verse 22 in verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love pure love not fleshly love joy peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. In verse 24, it says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. Those who truly belong to Christ, those who are born again, those who are saved, those who abide in Christ, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the laws. Verse 25. In verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Verse 26. In verse 26, let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another envying one another matthew chapter 7 verse 12 in matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 12 therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets all that we have in the law that is the old testament part of the law and the prophets everything will have there the interpretation of every statement the interpretation of every exhortation there is that whatsoever all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is 
the summary, the interpretation, the application of the law and the prophets. What do you want people to do to you? To hate you? To keep malice with you? Not to forgive you? To hold you down for what happened 10 years ago? No, you don't want that. What do you want? You want them to forgive? You want them to love? You want them to behave properly, appropriately? You want them to help, not to hurt whatsoever? You want that all that should do to you, do ye also unto them. We're looking at number three here. Number three, loaded with his perfect liberality for life. In James chapter 1, verse 25. James 1, verse 25, about who Lucas into the perfect law of liberty and continuous therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man will be loaded with his perfect liberality for today, for tomorrow, even for life. In Psalm 68, reading from verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. As we daily obey, as we daily do the word we hear, as we daily comply with his exhortation, he too daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. In Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 3, Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Christ is in heaven. We are in Christ. He lifts us up that we are seated by side in heavenly places and living in heavenly places and setting our thoughts, our mind, affection on things on high. He also gives us blessings in those heavenly places places. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Hebrews 5 verse 9 and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He is perfected and he has offered a perfect sacrifice and we believe in that perfect sacrifice and we live according to the word of the perfect Savior. And because we live according to his word and we obedient unto him, he grants us the salvation that lasts us forever. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the fruitful self forgetting our vestas in this way we forget ourselves in the service of others. We forget ourselves in the service of the Lord. And all we want to do is to please him, not to please ourselves. What will please the Lord? James chapter 1 verse 26. It says, if any man among you seem to be religious and bright let not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain 27 in verse 27 pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world to keep 
himself. God, keep me good prayer. You also will have to keep yourself from experience, from your past life, from the knowledge you have of the world. You know that there are things, there are people that will make you feel the guilty, evil. And so, if you really want to be kept from evil, you keep yourself unspotted from the world. The fruitful self forgetting investors in this way. Three things we're looking at. Number one. Number one, the believer's caution and bridled tongue in his work. Number two, the balanced care for the body in our world. Not in the entire world. We don't know the majority of people in the world. In our world. The people that surround you in your community. The people you know in your company. The people you know in the church. That they are burdened, they are poor, they are widows, they are orphans. That you will have a balanced care of them. Number three, the biblical conservation of believers are spotted by worldliness. Let's look at number one there. Number one, the believer's caution and bridal tongue in his word. James chapter 1 verse 26 it says if any man among you seem to be religious, you claim you're spiritual, you claim you're no more carnal, you claim you're on your way to heaven. If any man seem to be religious and bridleth not his own tongue but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. You see the tongue there. It's the tongue that slanders. You have to bridle the tongue not to slander. It's the tongue that lies. You have to bridle the tongue so it does not lie. It's the tongue that deceives your neighbor. Even the intimate, the closest person to you is the tongue that deceives them. If we bridle our tongue, there will be no deception. It's the tongue that, uh, that uh, utters hatred. It's the tongue that, you know, that poisons the lives of other people. It's the tongue that hurts other people. It's a world of fire, a world of iniquity. And if we're going to show that we're children of God, we bridle our tongue from evil, from hatred, from slander, from deception, from lying, from anything that is evil. It tells us in Psalm 39 verse 1, Psalm 39, reading from verse 1, I said, I will take heed to my ways. These are people who are seriously minded about going to heaven. They are not just religious, they are righteous, they are redeemed, they are ransomed. And it says that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Uh, the wicked might be talkative and he wants to talk, talk and talk. I want to bring you to his level. To her level and you bridle your tongue because you have something you are looking for you have something you are watching for look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says I was dumb or silence I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred you know sometimes when you talk and talk and talk you forget your deficiency 
You forget the things you ought to correct in your life. You forget that you have to pray. You forget. You need to go back to the cross so that you kind of repack your load. Getting ready for heaven. And so the man added. Some said, I was dumb or silence. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, my heart was hot within me while I was musing. I was meditating, I was thinking, thinking about my life, thinking about where I am now, thinking about where I ought to be. If you have a companion at home, so always talking, 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 from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you sleep at night, talk, 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 talk. It doesn't allow you, she doesn't allow you to think of your life. Think of your future. Think of the commandments of the Lord. And think of the demand of the Lord. Think of your shortcoming. And think of your own life so that you can be ready for heaven. He said, my heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burnt. Then speak I with my tongue. What did he speak with his tongue? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, Lord, make me to know. The, mine end and the measure of my days watch it is that I may know how frail I am we're looking at Proverbs chapter 26 reading from verse 3 Proverbs 26 verse 3 he weep for the horse he bridal for the ass and it says, a rod for the fool's back. We say fool. It's not thinking about heaven. It's not thinking about the future. It's not thinking about what he could have been. It's not thinking about the setbacks he had had. Talkativeness will not allow him to meditate about his life about his loss and the people around him he himself is a fool fools back and then look at verse 4 around him too he has somebody who is a fool answer not a fool according to his folly lest thou also be like unto him the people that do foolish things, and when you run after them, run after them, run after them, you forget your calling, you forget your life, you forget what God wants to be on earth. And there will always be people, fools, that are not thinking of their own future, and they're not thinking of your future. All they want to do is play the fool. And it says, don't mind them. Answer not a fool, react not to a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, there are times the fellow does not know the death of his folly, the death of his foolishness. And so sometimes you have to lend him some wisdom. How do you lend him some wisdom? Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. But balance up everything. Don't spend all your life responding to the fool. Don't spend all your life responding to the people that do not think of their future. And I want you to be like that. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou become like him. And you're fighting, fighting, fighting a civil battle inside you. You don't have any concentration or any knowledge to fight the outside battle. We're looking at um, James chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, always talking, 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 knowing that we shall receive 
the greater condemnation. Verse 2. In verse 2 it says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, can you say this day? I want to live just this, one day at a time. I want to gird, bridle my mouth, gag my mouth, that I offend not today, just today, just today. And then when tomorrow comes, you make up your mind today. My tongue has always brought me into trouble, into disrepute, into falling, into failure. But today, just today, I want to so gird, gag my mouth that I offend not just today. And if you take one day at a time, it will become a habit that your mouth, your leaves, your tongue will not lead you astray. For if in, in many things will offend all. If any man offend not in word, no angry word, no slanderous word, no hateful word, no revenging word. If any man offend not in word, the same man is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. We're looking at number two there. Number two, the balanced care for the body in our world, in your world, in the environment you live, the people you can touch, the people you can reach, the people you can help. It says in the first part of James chapter 1, verse 27, it says, pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this, to visit the fatherless, the orphans, and the widows in their affliction to visit them so as to help them to visit them so as to lift them up to visit them so as to take bodies away from them to visit them so as to offer some help to them financial help material help moral help courage comfort everything. Look at Job chapter 29. In Job chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. It says, I look at my neighbors, I look at the people around me, and I offered help to them. I see they don't have any help, and I do. I help. And we ought to do that. Offer help, give help, lift up the bodies in the people, give food to the hungry, give clothing to the naked, and take financial bodies away from them as much as we can. We're looking at verse 13. In verse 13, the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. And that's the practical thing we're to do. It's not enough just to believe doctrine. We have to live out the doctrine and cause joy in the hearts of the people who are joyless, who are sad, who are sorrowful because of the burden of needs in their lives. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Verse 15. In verse 15, I was eyes to the blind, the blind who could not see. I used my eyes to point the way to them and feet to the lame. Maybe you have to carry them at the back because they are lame. You help them 
and the deficiency in them and what is missing in them because God has blessed you. You have eyes to see, you have feet to walk, you are able to lend them what you have so that they live a more complete life. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, I will say, Father to the poor, and a cause which I knew not, I searched out. We're coming to number three here. Number three, we're looking at the biblical con conservation of believers unspotted by worldliness. In James chapter 1, reading from verse 27, the latter part, it says that we're to keep, keep himself unspotted from the world. Or spotted from the world. Do you know the world will defile you? And you have to keep yourself unspotted from the world, from the festivities of the world, from the festivals of the world, from the pleasures of the world, from the music of the world, from everything they do in the world that will come as a defilement to the believer. It tells us in James chapter 4 verse 4. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers, spiritual, adulteresses, spiritual, know ye not that the friendship of the world, know ye not that intimacy with the world, don't you know that interaction with the world, don't you know that befriending the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God, the enemy of God, tell me. Somebody is religious and is a friend of the world and he attends all their parties and he drinks all their drinks and he, he shares with them. I don't want to be any different. I want to, you know, be humble. I'm like them and they're like me. And you are friendly with them. And you partake of their lifestyle. And it says such a person is the enemy of God. If that person dies in that condition, where does he spend eternity? He remains physically in the church. He's coming to all the services. He's interacting with us. And when he dies, we even take the responsibility of the burial. But he was a friend of the world in heart, in life, in lifestyle, in everything, a friend of the world, if the enemy of God, an enemy of God dies in that condition, where will you spend eternity? In First John chapter 2, reading from verse 15, First John chapter 2 verse 15, love not the world. A command, a command, a command, and be ye doers of the world, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, any woman too, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. In verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh of the world, the lust of the eyes of the world, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. In verse 17, and the world passes away. The world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that Doeth the will of God abideth forever. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. The Lord grant us grace, purpose of heart, passion to follow the Lord 
and the pursuit for the revelation of the word of God so that the focus, the concentration, the consecration to be doers of the word are not hearers only and not preachers only. The Lord grant unto us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You'll see have to continue in prayer when you get back home. Bring everything, take everything you have heard to the Lord in prayer. Has the Lord spoken to you tonight? Has he revealed anything to you? Be ye doers of the word. Remember, where you are falling, repent, and do the first works. Otherwise, I'll come. And take the candlestick out of its place, except you repent. Let's call upon the Lord. Lord, you reveal so much of your mind, your word, your way, your will unto me. Grant me all the grace I need, all the strength I need, all the steadfastness I need, all the thoughtfulness I need. Don't be thoughtless. Think on the word. Meditate on the word. So that you'll be a doer, not a hearer. Preachers like me will be doers, not just preachers of the word. The Pharisees preached Lord, but they didn't do what they said, even the little they knew, they didn't obey, just obey, just obey. The other way, God's way. When the Spirit speaks to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's hand, you must do as he commands. Never stop to reason why. All he requires is just obey. If for mansions you sigh, mansions on high. In the land beyond the sky, faith and duty will cry, just obey. Just obey, just obey. The way God's way. When the Spirit speaks to you, there is just one thing to do. Just obey. Just obey. Don't be a self-deluded hearer of the word. Word. He doer. Don't be a self defiling hearer of the word. Just obey. To take self denial. If any man follows him and denies not himself to bear his cross, 
he cannot be his disciple. When last did you deny yourself? Of restraining yourself that I won't say that. I won't wear that. I won't go there. I won't allow the works of the flesh the self-denying believer that will remain faithful to the word be a doer of the word at all cost. Visit the fatherless, help them, the widows in the affliction, help them, we we'll read it, not hearers only, but doers of the word, bear eyes to the blind. Be feet to the lame. Be a doer of the word. Be a provider for the poor, for the indigent who cannot provide for themselves. Be a doer of the word. Bridle your tongue. No word of hatred, malice, slander, no corrupt word coming out of your mouth. Be a doer of the word. And keep yourself unspotted from the world. The world will defile you. Association with them will defile you. Intimacy with the world will disqualify you from heaven. Keep yourself unspotted from the world. He commands us to repent, be a doer of the world. He commands us to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Be a doer of the world not hear us only. He commands us to seek to save them that are lost. Occupy till I come. Be a doer of the word, not hear us only. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your revelation. Thank you for what we have heard. But we know the glory is not in hearing. The blessing is in doing. The strength, the focus, the decision, the determination, the dedication to be doers of the word grant unto us in Jesus' name. Yeah. We we'll pray none of us will reject your word for any reason. We we'll receive, we we'll apply, and 
we'll pray, we'll receive the grace, we'll be doers in Jesus' name. Every day, every moment, all the periods of our lives, wherever we are, whoever is with us, whoever we are with, help us, Lord, to be doers of your word. And we pray that the blessing of the doers, of the obedient, that blessing will shower upon every life. More grace in every life. Yeah. More divine ability in every life. Yeah. We we'll pray you impart unto us that divine nature yeah. that will always love, always desire, always delight in doing your will. Yeah. Keep us separate, unspotted from the world, yeah. and help us to concentrate, focus all our life on doing the will of the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 